Hello, blessings, everyone. This is Rashad Cartwright. Listen, thank you so much for uh, tuning in. Um, if you're watching this on AmericaPreachers.com, welcome. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I encourage you to subscribe and watch some of our um, previous and some of our future videos. Listen, uh, I wanted to bring a couple of individuals in here that's, um, that's qualified to speak. We spoke a story on AmericaPreachers.com that's been getting a lot of traction. It was about a pastor out in Houston, Texas, who refused to um, officiate a wedding ceremony because the bride's dress was too sexy. Um, a lot of y'all probably commented on AmericaPreachers.com, and I wanted to bring in, like I said, two individuals. One is Reverend C.C. Jackson. She is at 7th Street Memorial Baptist Church, where her husband, um, Pastor Michael Jackson, is the pastor out in Richmond, Virginia. Thank you so much. And also we have um, Assistant Pastor Sean Jones. Um, he is the uh, Assistant Pastor at Mount Zion Baptist Church Christian Complex in St. Louis. So listen, both of y'all, thank you so much for joining me. Not a problem. Thanks for having us. Yes, thanks for having us. Oh, no problem. Listen, I want to go right into it. Um, I want to, Reverend Cece, uh, give me your um, your thoughts on that. Should a pastor, um, do you believe that he was right in his actions of not officiating the ceremony? I think his timing was off. I appreciate um, what he wanted to do, but I think his timing was off. I think that it's very important that a pastor meet with his bride and groom prior to any type of ceremony or service and let them know what their expectations are to include dress, music, and everything else. Um, you know, that was his, his right to refuse to perform the ceremony, but his timing was horrific. And it, it, it shouldn't have been right. like that. Got you. Now, you mentioned his timing, but you believe that he was correct in not performing it. Well, I think it was his fault. <laughs> you know, if he made that decision not to perform it, you know, it, it was his fault. And his timing was horrific. I fault him for the entire incident. Okay, let me ask you this question. Do you believe that he should have still, um, um, I know the timing was awful. Do you believe that he still should have performed the ceremony? Well, if I read your uh, article correctly, that they were somewhere else um, with food prepared to have a reception. And mm -hmm. so if he did not want to actually have the ceremony in his church because he had committed to actually marrying them, then maybe he should have tried to accommodate them by moving somewhere else. Okay. Uh, let me get Reverend Jones. Uh, what's your take on that, on the whole situation? Oh, uh, I, I, similar to uh, uh, Reverend Cece, I think he should have done it just simply because it was already that day family and friends had been there. Um, but here in Mount Zion, we have a strict policy, one, that we are nobody for counseling where we can share not just the wedding day itself, but understanding what a bride and groom will go into in their marriage. The issue I have again is that he should have gone ahead and had done the ceremony because it was the day of. Family and friends were there. Um, I do agree, Reverend Cece, that they should have, he should have talked to the family ahead of time. Definitely. Um, the other issue I have really is the fact that apparently, according to your article, that there was another minister in the house who was willing to say, hey, your convictions are your convictions. We don't disrespect how you feel. Um, let me go ahead and do it and sign off on a marriage certificate. He still refused. I have a major issue with that. My thing is that you, you have the right to refuse, but you don't have the right to stop any other preacher from doing the ceremony unless it's in your church. If it's in your church, then you have the right. But if it's not, then you need to go ahead and sit down with your conviction and let somebody else marry these folks. Gotcha. Reverend Cece, I believe we had a previous com um, uh, conversation. He was telling me about how you believe that the timing was, like you say, horrific. Um, however, you believe that you, he made the correct choice and not form the wedding correct that if that was his conviction if, if he felt that strongly about it that her dress was not appropriate for him then he made the right choice according to his conviction I just feel that he should have thought out the entire process and and to come in and make a joke about her dress um, that that was unacceptable Yes. Now let me ask you this for the individuals who's looking at it, and I, I'm just going off of looking at the comments right here. They're saying 
what about the, to the message that gives the unsaved, however, if uh, with not performing and not officiating the wedding, how that could have been a soul reach for the kingdom? What is your response on that? That is just, I hate to say it, so irrelevant to me. Um, there, there should be order in the house. There should be order in the house. And he should have established his order before he agreed to perform that wedding. That's what he should have done. He should have established the order. Because you can reach all of these souls, but then when they come to the house, there still has to be some type of order that they're looking for. And that they expect. So he should have made sure that his order was in place and it was clear before he got all these people to the church and then decided that he wasn't going to go forward with performing their ceremony. That was horrific. Gotcha. Uh, Reverend Sean, I want to go to you. How important is it being a pastor? Um, with You were saying how your church have different guidelines. How important is it for the church to have these guidelines so in issues like this don't arise? Oh, it's extremely important. The reality is there are a lot of folk who are unchurched who want to have a church wedding. There's nothing wrong with that, but depends on that church. Every church has its own set of values and morals as to dress, music, and so on that takes place in a wedding ceremony. I think the issue is, for many persons, is that they forget that a wedding is a worship service is a celebration of a covenant that one has with God concerning their agreement about how they treat and care for another individual. Once you understand it is a worship ceremony, then attire, music, dress, and all the other intricacies that go into a wedding um, can be flushed out. But until you understand that, that takes place really in a premarital council, in a session where the pastor or the pastor's designee, whether it's another minister, Many churches have wedding coordination ministries where they have a member of their church who coordinates with another member of that wedding party, that family, so that um, all these things are worked out before the day of. That's my issue, that it all went down wrong on the day of. And at that point, is you know people coming from out of town, people spend money, let these folks get married and move on about their business. I understand that. So your thing is you were still, if this was... Um if you had the conversation with him prior uh, and this came up on the day of the wedding, you would not perform the ceremony. Oh, very much so, because I would have I would have taken the check the day of giving the church still for renting the ceremony out, but I still would have said, no, thank you. Um, reality is this. Once you let people know ahead of time, then they are responsible for their actions. But because he neglected for whatever reason to talk to them prior to, it's kind of a catch-22. You didn't do your job as a pastor or a minister ahead of time, then you cannot now fault the people for not knowing what the rules are is for your house. Mm. Amen. Let me, um, Reverend Jones mentioned a little bit about it. What can the church take from this incident, of uh, this um, huge uh, mistake on a, a lot of individuals' part? What can the church take from this and grow um, so problems like this don't happen again? We're, we're, there are two things that I would bring up. Um, one is that was a very, very new church. If From what I understand, it was just um, over a year old. And so there are two things that I always recommend when you get into this being a pastor or leading people. Two things very important to me. One is you need to find a mentor, somebody that can help you, that can talk to you, that can spend time with you, that can say these are some of the things that you want to be cognizant of as you begin to grow your church. And having a mentor, someone to say, you know, when you're performing a wedding, these are some things that you need to remember because everybody that comes to the church for a church wedding may not be a member of the church. And so having a good mentor would have helped him to understand that there are some dynamics that come with the wedding that you should know about. Second, I am a huge proponent of ministers being educated. You know, a doctor cannot perform surgery without a degree. You know, astronauts cannot go up in the sky. Engineers cannot build buildings. But yet we have preachers every day, you know, just saying, you know, I'm called and going to a pulpit and they have no training. And I think a good balance on the combination of the two, having a good mentor and some some official uh, seminary type training would have helped 
with some of these issues that he was dealing with. And so now he's in a position where, you know, a lot of us do not agree with what he's done. And if he had these two resources, we wouldn't have this this um, situation. So I, I just really think that having those two resources would have helped him tremendously and and not to make it seem as if the church doesn't want anyone there because that, you know, that gives people the impression, you know, I can't come to church or I can't come where I, you know, come to church and feel comfortable. But like Reverend Jones said, it's a worship experience. And when you understand that, it should govern everything that happens during that worship experience. He dropped the ball, and I hope he learns a valuable lesson, and he has someone to kind of mentor him and say, you don't want this to happen again, or he finds some official training on, you know, some things that, some basic things that you should know when performing a wedding. Gotcha. I, 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 I could end it right there, but I just want to speak on behalf of, of individuals who's watching this and saying look these two individuals they are doing the right thing they're not trying to shack up they're not trying to um, go about their yeah she might not have church training um, she might not know the proper etiquette but at least she's trying to get it right um, why is it a problem of course for them to get married when they're trying to do the right thing Reverend John I don't think it's a problem with them getting married. I applaud them. The concern I had is that the article ended by saying they still were not married to this day, to what I believe I read. And that bothered me that they allowed a situation or, you know, behind a dress to stop them from doing it. If God had called them to be together, then if you have to get married in the courthouse, the church office, wherever you got to get married, you're going to get married and live your life. One day does not make your marriage. Um, and so I agree that. You know, it was an opportunity for ministry, for outreach. Um, but I don't think that, I think the larger picture is the fact that, yes, we applaud them for getting married, for doing it the right way. I don't know these folks. I don't know their background. Um, but in the same instance, um, the way you start a marriage is how you're going to finish it and how you're going to end it. And I think that the struggle was not that they're doing, they're getting married. People get married every day. The struggle was really in this church, how are we going to operate? Are we going to have a holiness concept of what you wear and what you don't wear? Um, and I saw the dress. I mean, it's a club dress all the way through, but I was glad that baby girl was going to get married. That wasn't a problem for me. The problem was the timing and, and then even maybe how they may have reacted. I'm sure they were upset and indignant. I probably would have been also that it was your wedding day and it seemed to get ruined. But I just am disappointed that they did not press on and still get married at some point. Gotcha. And I want to address one other issue in the article and story about the, do you find that it was disrespectful for the other minister to ask the, um, the pastor of the church, uh, could he officiate the wedding, Reverend Jackson? I, I don't see a problem with that. But again, that's his house. So if he decides that that's the rule of his house, then, you know, you, you have to go by the rules of the house. I, you know, I just have a problem with it. Uh, just like Reverend Jones was saying, you know, this was a beautiful opportunity to bring two people together that had obviously fallen in love and committed themselves to each other. And he ruined their day. And if his conviction was that strong that he didn't want to do it, then he should have let the other minister do it and just stepped aside and just learned a, a valuable lesson about what needed to be done in his house. That was not disrespectful. What the other minister did was he saw a need and was trying to meet the needs of the people that were there. Gotcha, gotcha. Awesome. And hey, thank you so much for y'all take. I, I thank y'all for um, joining with me on Skype. Reverend Jackson, Reverend Jones. I'm loving that KSI in the back, brother. Yo, yo. <laughs> well, I'm throwing up my sevens. <laughs> <laughs> Seven There's street, going on here, but uh, I got you. <laughs> hey, thank y'all so much. Bless it. Sure. <laughs> You didn't ask about that dress. What I thought about the dress. Oh, what you thought? <laughs> oh, you had some, you had some thoughts on the dress. That dress was hot. <laughs> oh, you, oh, you like the dress? <laughs> oh. That dress. Yeah, that dress was. You know, the dresses would have been something that maybe she wore at the reception yeah. because she was a model, and she was. A, and, and if that was the, I, that was a picture of the dress. So if she fit into that dress, she had to be, you know, a pretty beautiful young lady. Yeah, she knew what she was working with. So, you know, I didn't find a problem with the dress. That might have been maybe a reception dress. 
and not a, you know, a wedding dress. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I kind of agree. I think, I think, I mean, it's just the city, but I, I feel that uh, all the family comes to town, expenses and all that, especially the family, stuff like that. Uh, it would have been, been my family. family. You say, would have been your family, what? It would not have been my family. You would have fought the preacher and had my family. You ain't know? Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they would have been like, oh, we going to have a wedding today. <laughs> Oh, wait, and then a funeral. <laughs>